I shall be reading said sonnet. Here we go. <laughs> Good afternoon. No, I hope you're all alright. <clears throat> How can I then return in happy plight that am debarred the benefit of rest, when day's oppression is not eased by night, but day by night and night by day oppressed, and each Though enemies to either's reign, do in consent shake hands to torture me. The one by toil, the other to complain how far I toil, still farther off from thee. I tell the day to please him. Thou art bright and dost him grace when clouds do blot the heaven. So flatter I the swart complexioned night when sparkling stars twire not, thou gildest the even. But day doth daily draw my sorrows longer, and night doth nightly make grief's length seem stronger. Oh, runs on neatly from the last one there, doesn't it? All about this whole like being weary in bed type thing. And on this one, similar sort of argument. He's basically saying, I can't win whether it's night or day because either way I'm still completely tortured by this whole thing. In the day I'm keeping active and toiling away but then at night I'm not eased by rest at all and yeah to work through it how can I then return in happy plight that I'm debarred the benefit of rest so he's not able to rest he's he's been not allowed that that benefit when day's oppression is not eased by night, saying is not eased by night. So the horrible day is not then complimented and comforting him in the night time. And each, though enemies to each other's reigns, we're saying that night and day are enemies. They're working together, do in consent shake hands to torture me. The one by toil, the other to complain how far I toil, still farther off from thee. Saying like, by day he's toiling to win this person's love and at night time he can't stop just he's just thinking about how far away he is from reaching his goal which is to win the heart of this man i tell the day to please him thou art bright and dost grace the and dust him grace when clouds do blot the heaven and he's saying like i'm trying to ask nature and night and day to cut me some blooming slack here um, and then he says, and he flatters the swart complexioned night. So swart is just like dark and complexion is your skin, obviously, but it's spelt complexion. I mean, it is spelt with an X. I was about to say it's spelt wrong in here. <laughs> um, when sparkling stars twire not the gildest, thou gildest even, but day doth daily draw. Love that. But day doth, dra but day doth daily draw. Tricky, that one. But day doth daily draw my soul grows longer, and night doth nightly make grief's length seem longer. It's just like, oh. But day doth daily. Every day, day drags out his pain, and every night makes his grief seem longer and stronger. Poor guy, you know what I mean? He's going through a bit of a stinker, wouldn't you say? So I'll read it again, and tomorrow will be Sonnet 29. Good one, that. Uh-oh, excuse me a second. Woo! Sonnet 28, once more. Unto the breach, dear friends. A little Shakespeare joke there. <laughs> so here we go. Sonnet 28 again. <laughs> Can't make yourself laugh, haven't you? Okay. How can I then return in happy plight that am debarred the benefit of rest? When day's oppression is not eased by night, but day by night and night by day oppressed. 
and each, though enemies to each other's reign, do in consent to shake hands to torture me. The one by toil, the other to complain how far I toil, still farther off from thee. I tell the day to please him. Thou art bright and dost him grace when clouds do blot the heaven. So flatter I the swart complexioned night when sparkling stars twire not, thou gildest the even. But day doth daily draw my sorrows longer, and night doth nightly make my grief's length seem stronger. Pippa added an extra syllable in that final line there. <laughs> I put, a night doth nightly make my griefs. That's not right. A night doth nightly make griefs length seem longer. It's quite difficult to say this one, which is most likely intentional, I'd say. And night doth nightly make griefs. Going from a k to g, like they're tricky sounds to make anyway. I'm talking more, sorry. Um, like. They're really tough for me because I think I have, from my, where I'm from, my Essex accent means that my kind of palate and my the back of my tongue is quite quite low and it doesn't engage very well. And I've also, I am very aware that I have a bit of a weak R. So, so going from a k, 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 which is the K sound, to a g, 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 which is the same sound, but one is unvoiced and the other is voiced getting a bit technical here from like actor perspective but like I personally struggle to make those sounds just because and I've been training those sounds for ages by the way I've done three years basically four years training and then some and I'm still a bit like it's still something that I have to work on um so yes yeah, so that's just interesting and obviously this would have been written in London so similar accent to me obviously maybe not in those days it would have been a bit more like ye olde English and all that jazz but um Mm, it's interesting. I urge you, I always go on about reading it out loud, but I urge you to read this one out loud. Because it's quite simple to follow, I think, in terms of the point of the sonnet, but also to get your lips and teeth and the tip of the tongue around the glorious words that Billy has decided to put together into a sonnet. Fabulous! Well that's it! Sonny, 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 Sonny 29 starts like this. Here we go. When in disgrace with fortune and men's eyes. It's gonna be a corker that one isn't it? Fabulous. Put my bookmark in. Do a little bit of work on that later. Pleasure to see you all. Thank you to Billy. Thank you to Billy. And thank you to you for watching. Goodbye.